I'm your host, Kinetic, and you're watching Game On End. Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at questing add-ons. Between the release of all the new allied races, the combination of older expansion zones, and the scaling of both quests and mobs in all those zones, it can be a little confusing to players who might make the decision to jump back into leveling a new character as to where they can head to quest and to level up at any given level. Now, while none of these are perfect, following a questing guide is definitely going to be faster than trying to do this just on your own and guessing where to go and what order to uh, complete quests in and stuff like that. So let's take a look at the first add-on, which is Dougie Guides. Okay, so the first time we run the add-on, we will get this pop-up asking us if we'd like to go through the tutorial. So we'll go ahead and do that. And this is going to help us just to get the settings uh, the way we'd like them. You can go through the little mini-map icon here and switch through the modes. Fully guided mode, just the essentials, which is a simplified version, and then of course off. And then this is just telling us about the smaller frame that will pop up. And of course we have some options here. We can turn on or off the gear advisor, the quest accepting and turning in. Uh, we can nameplate tracking, auto selection of flight paths of when the guide tells us to fly somewhere. So a lot of cool little quality of life features just make the process that much quicker. Of course we have the option for which guide is shown here. The guides normally just kind of go through automatically, but every once in a while you may just decide to switch a zone to maybe quest with a friend or a guildie or something, or if you just want to skip over a zone that you just don't want to do. So here's the options of how to change between the different guides. Now keep in mind these boxes that are showing up are actually hovering over the, the little map that we'll see in a minute. But right now we have the options showing, so we can search for a guide location. We also have all the same controls that were on that mini-map there, plus a few more. Turn on a notification for, you know, letting us know when we've completed, you know, gathered enough of the item from the quest, or killed enough of the mob, whatever those things are, and you can customize that there. You also have an option for a button to abandon all of your quests related to a specific zone you're in. And then, of course, we have the icons on the nameplate and stuff like that, and the text on them. We can adjust all those. And then the size, and whether we see just text or icon or both. And then we have the questing arrow, which is similar to, like, TomTom. -tom. Uh, so this will let us adjust all the settings for that. And more options here, the little ant trails, which we'll see in a minute on the little map setting waypoints manually. You can, of course, customize the little trails there and stuff. A lot of tweakability here. Really anything you want to do. So now this is the zone map. This we'll see in a second uh, when we get into an area to quest. But these are all the options for this. Then, of course, we have the options for the frames. This is, as you can see, the border here. You know, you can make the menus. If you wanted to match an overall, like, UI look you have, which is nice, you know, if you want, want everything to fit in together, there's something here for sure that will fit in with most unit frame add-ons. And now we have some options for the world map and the mini map. Of course, can remove the map fog so we can see all the zone without having explored it. Have it show objectives in the areas and stuff like that. Uh, 
We, of course, can turn on automatic use of all this stuff. You know, when you get to the areas, it can choose the right thing for you. Then, of course, we have Gear Advisor, which will prompt you, you know, when you get a quest reward or whatever for uh, the right item to pick out of the rewards for the current spec or whatever spec you choose there. You can manually choose the weighting of gear. This is a little more helpful for higher levels. It's not so much an issue when you're leveling up a character, but you know, it's nice to have, you know, if you're going through dungeons or whatever, you can see if something's actually an upgrade. Now this is one of my favorite features. There are some downsides to it, but I still really like it a lot. And I wish there were a standalone add-on that did this, but it's auto mounting. So basically you can choose a mount of your choice for all of these options. If you're in a flyable area, non-flyable area, or if you're in water. You also can set this delay after spell, which I would recommend going and setting pretty high. You also have some other options here for automatic repairing and stuff like that. Now, the reason for setting that automatic mounting on spell thing will become apparent in a minute, but we'll get back to that. So we're flying into our first zone here. As you can see, the add-on is automatically choosing the mount for us as soon as we land off the flight path. Super cool feature. I really do wish there was an add-on that did that by itself. I haven't seen one. so. If you have seen something that does this, well please met. leave a message in the comments hey there. there. I'd love to check it out. But all it does is just mounts for you as soon as you leave combat. So we've landed here, and here is the little guide map that we were looking at the options for before. So as you can see here, it shows you the little ant trail that's leading you towards where it's recommending to go and then tells you what you should do there, which is turn in the quest. But I know that this zone primarily starts here, so what I'm gonna do is run over, grab the quests here, because this is naturally Greetings. where you would path in from the first zone. And you can see that the ant trails are still, by default, recommending that we go to turn in this other quest. So I'm gonna do a test here real quick and see if starting on this quest objectives here will automatically reset to tell us to, to finish this quest or not. doesn't look like it is. Try another one here. No, so it's not telling us to do it. Need now, help. of course, you can Be manually careful. override what it's telling you to do. So we've completed a quest here and it's still not adjusting. So we'll just manually click on this quest here and it happily just jumps to the next quest that we've selected here. So we'll go ahead and start doing some of these quests. Now, of course, as I said before, you know, you can choose to take your own path and just let the thing remind you of what you're supposed to do as you go, or you can just follow along completely with the guide. That's totally up to you. Most of these guides will just adjust to you doing that. Now, as you can see, we got into this area and the little map went away and it just went to the arrow. But as soon as we completed it, it actually jumped back to the map and showed us the ant trails again of where to head. I really love these features. So we get into the area again and it just goes to the arrow again, which is just a simplified version of where to kind of focus. So we'll jump to here, complete this quest. Light be with you. Go with honor, friend. And it just continues on with the pathing. Path 
Okay, so let's jump to the next add-on here. We'll disable Dougie, and we'll go ahead and jump over to the WoW Pro guides. So we've got some options here. We can enable disable with a click, and then we can open up the menu. Okay, so we can uh, automate the selection of quests, turning in of quests. Now these guides will actually assist even with pet battles and stuff, which is kind of cool. If it has a if it has a team selection saved for it and you have the right pets, it'll offer to load those for you. We're not going to get into that, but it is a fun little option to have if you're interested in the pet battles. You can also, of course, have it help with flights and finding treasures. Here is the options for the guide window here. Quest tracking, coordinates. Auto loading of guides based on the zone you're in and when you complete one guide, it'll offer where to go next. Same thing with a completion of quests or steps. You can have it notify you when you've finished something and need to move on to the next step. And of course, we have some options for how it displays the questing and stuff like that. Okay, so here's the window we'll drag over here. Right now we don't have a guide loaded. So we'll go ahead and pick one here. Okay, so we'll just click over to the guide list and we have the option for leveling guides here. Okay, so we'll turn on if we want it to focus on any of these other things. And then, of course, we can focus on trying to stay with a certain difficulty of quests, which is actually kind of cool. You know, if you only want to do trivial quests or if you only want to do really difficult quests. As far as experience goes, you know, you're probably fine with just following whatever the guide recommends. But, you know, if you have a preference to try harder stuff. With the scaling now, it's not so big of a deal. As you can see here, this is still showing the recommendations based on the old leveling. Um, now, basically, anything from 20 to 60 is all the same. The quests will scale with you, so you can choose any of these zones. But I will say that I recommend going with the lower zones when at all possible, because the main thing here is that they didn't adjust the layout of any of the zones or any of that. These lower zones were initially designed around players not being able to fly or not, you know, having um, faster mounts and stuff like that. They knew a lot of these players would be traveling on foot or, you know, slower at the least. So a lot of things are really close together, a lot of questing compacted into tighter areas, and that just helps overall with being able to quest quickly. Uh, you get to the higher level zones, or what used to be the higher level zones, and they uh, can be substantially more spread out, which slows down the process quite a bit. So you can see here, we're just kind of following along with whatever it tells us to do, heading to where it tells us to, and accepting and turning in quests as it suggests. Now, the thing I really love about this add-on is that some of the quest guides can actually be really helpful here. In certain instances with other add-ons, I felt like it didn't, it just kind of told you to go here and kill this mob or do this thing, but beyond that, it didn't tell you anything else. So with the WoW Pro guides, the really cool thing is that in some of these instances, you have to perform a certain function in order to complete the quest. And in most cases that I've seen, 
um, it actually will explain to you what you're supposed to do. So like here we'll see this live in the life quest, which is the next quest queued. So you can see here it says to head to the back of the cave and use the item. So we went to the back of the cave, used the item, and that actually completes the quest. Other guides may not have been as specific as, you know, heading to the back of the cave to use that. Um, in some of the other cases, it actually can be even more descriptive, giving you advice on how to complete a quest. Which in certain cases, I mean, I've, I know I've spent a lot of time sometimes trying to figure out, like, what is this quest wanting me to do? It's not just a click a thing or kill a mob. Um, you actually have to do something. You'll see here it says, head to the group of thugs at the back of the barn. They'll attack you after they've finished their conversation. So we went back there and did that and completed it. For the Alliance. Again, you know, just a really nice feature to have here. Okay, so let's go ahead and run both of these at the same time, now that we've seen what each one does individually. Now also as a reminder, the WoW Pro, as we can see here, lots of pop-ups. Okay, so we have just some information here telling us about uh, what's going on on the Dougie Guide's small map here. I think it basically just didn't save that we had run this already the first time, but anyhow. Um, and then this is the gear advisor now, which is running. So you can turn this offer on if you like. Um, you can also block items from being suggested, but it basically is showing you that you have an item in your bags that may be worth swapping out, but it's not always the best recommendation. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. For leveling, it's not a huge uh, deal, but I think it's basically just preferring the versatility on that trinket to the haste that's on the one I have equipped. But it's not taking into account that uh, the haste trinket has the, you know, the heal on kills, Lighten which is helpful. You. You and the something. other one is more of a tanking trinket anyway. So uh, we'll go ahead and skip that one and keep going. King's honor, friend. Be careful. What can I do for you? What can I do for you? Okay, so as you can see here, right now it's actually sending us to two different places. So let's take a look at the settings here. Okay, so these are all just options here on the little zone map for the Dougie guides. You can customize it, you know, if you have a preference on how it looks. And then of course the overall size of it. size of your arrow relative to the map there. So it's nice that, you know, you can dial this in to uh, look more the way that you'd prefer. Of course, the option here to match it up with LVI, which is the most common, I think, like total unit frame replacement.
We will now head here. So they now have us both going to the same place. What can I do for you? What can I do for you? King's honor, friend. So here's another instance where it's actually really helpful. It says, kill the thugs until they drop a red bandana. The first building on the right usually has a couple in there. So it's cool. It's basically just giving you a suggestion of where to look for this quest drop. Of course, we also have the Dougie guides showing us to come in here and grab these propaganda posters. The WoW Pro one was not telling us that while we were in there. So, you know, like I said, none of these are perfect. Well met for the Alliance. Another gear suggestion here. We'll go ahead and click it. And it should automatically equip it now, so we'll double check. Yeah, so put those bracers on. So nice, you know, you don't got to go digging through your bags for the new item you got. Okay, so here on the world map is the button from Dougie Guides. You can basically abandon all of the quests connected to the guide that you're currently on. If you decide to leave a zone, especially once you uh, level out of an expansion. So once you hit, you know, 58 or 59 and you decide to go to Burning Crusade or something, you know, you can abandon all of the old zone things there. So, okay, let's go ahead and enable our next couple of uh, add-ons here. We've got a Obelisk Quest and X to level. Obelisk Quest just handles the quest tracking on the right there, and you can set it to, you know, be fully automatic or semi-automatic, but it's just tracking quests based on the zone you're in. And X to level gives us this little bar on the left here. Uh, here's some of the options. We can select what sources of experience we want to view in the thing. We can change the look of the thing here on the left. And then we can choose the options that are shown in here, including on the uh, tooltip. And then you can see here, this is showing that next to the bottom row there on the left. All right. Off I go then. But we can choose which items are being tracked as far as gaining experience. All of it's there to just show you kind of how each source of experience is affecting, you know, how quickly you're leveling. So killing mobs versus questing, you know, versus gathering or any of these other things here. So it's actually kind of cool. You can see occasionally, you know, you'll come across mobs where they actually are giving a really high amount of experience. And, you know, you may want to take a few minutes and just grind those mobs for a little bit. If it'll get you to your next level quicker than finishing off the quest in that area and then traveling somewhere that's further away. All right. Off I go then. So we also have this cool little timer here on the bottom that shows us at our current pace of killing mobs and turning in quests, how long it'll take us to get to the next level. So let's go ahead and try some of these out. We've also enabled Azeroth Autopilot, which didn't have a guide um, at the time of this video for Westfall. So we had to wait till we came to Red Ridge here. You can hey see there. it's giving us detailed information there, telling us to go to the NPC on the top of the tower. Well met. Be careful. Also need to uh, update our guide for WoW Pro Guides. Let's find the right one here. Pretty simple to jump to a new guide uh, when you change zones. Find Red Ridge here, switch over. Most of these add-ons come with some kind of waypoint arrow. Some of them just use TomTom. -tom. 
So we'll see here, here's what I was talking about with the auto mounting. If you have a trade like enchanting or something and you are trying to get this done, you may wanna put the delay time for the mounting up much higher because it will keep trying to mount you while you're trying to cast the disenchants. And here's another fun thing. Azeroth Autopilot automatically turns on war mode. So be aware of that. If you don't want it on, make sure you turn it off before you leave town. So let's check out a couple of other things here. We've got Grail, which is just basically a database of quest information. A couple of the add-ons will pull information from that if you have it installed. Just keeps track of your progress on different longer quest chains and stuff like that. And then we also have BTW quests. Okay, so let's take a look here. So what this has added in the quest journal is trees for the different quest chains here. So we hover over one, it says we're currently on this chain, and then it shows which quest we're currently on, what step we're on. So we can actually see here, and this is really cool, if you're just trying to complete the storyline of a zone, you can see there which quests actually continue the storyline and which ones are just side quests. So let's take a look here. We'll turn on the automatic quest tracking for Obelisk Quest. Okay. And it's gonna go ahead and update. We saw the little spark there. Okay, so this last one here is KibUI. It actually has a lot of other things that are modules for it. So this is with the menu enabled. You can have it replace your actual menu there as it's done. You can turn this off, of course, but the cool thing with having the menu on is that it lets you overall change like the fonts for everything. So you can change it there as the global font. It's got a lot of cool different fonts in there. So if you want to really change like the look of your UI, that's part of this. We won't really get into like changing a bunch of this stuff, but you have a lot of options here. But then looking at the options for quest stuff, we have the quest mob indicators, which you can customize here. You can choose the texture that's over the, the mob's heads if they're related to a quest that you're currently on. And then you can also offset those, like if you have another thing like cooldowns showing or something like that. And then you can also just have it shown when you mouse over. So you can see there the little exclamation mark now, and we can also see the text below it that says that we need, you know, 25 of those for our current quest that we're on. So it's actually really cool here. Just helps you to pick out, you know, when you're in an area where there's multiple types of mobs, but you only need one for a quest, say in this case, you know, if, if there were other mobs than these renegades, then we would be able to easily like look out on the other mobs that are here and pick out So you can see how much further those exclamation marks show versus anything else. You can see from, from a pretty good distance that there are mobs that you need for the quest you're on. Super cool for when you're just, you know, running into a new area and trying to quickly find what you need to kill. You don't need to like look at names and check the quest log and all that. It just shows you right there you need these mobs to complete any quest that you're currently on. Uh, makes leveling a lot quicker, um, in my opinion.
So hopefully you've found a couple things that uh, may seem helpful to you. I hope you try some of these out. Please leave your feedback in the comments. Let me know which ones you found the most helpful. Uh, maybe that'll help others to find things that work for them. Hey, if you've made it this far, I really appreciate you sticking around. That will do it for this episode. If you've enjoyed this, remember, pressing the like button is absolutely free. Subscribe and stay tuned for more Game On End.